Hey guys, welcome to The Finer Things. In case you missed it, last week we covered my pair of REL S812s uh, on an episode of The Finest Things. Uh, but this week, what are we taking a look at? So, this week we're looking at the Sony SSCS9 bookshelf speakers, their core series bookshelf speakers, in an episode of Tom Finery, um, which is essentially where we dick around, but stay classy. SSNA2ESs. That's that. That's the idea of the video. Um, so we're talking about a one hundred and fifty dollar uh, retail for the pair of, of the Sony pair. bookshelves uh, versus uh, ten thousand um, for the pair of towers. Big, big difference in cost between the two. So sure. uh, just as a point of reference, uh, the, the system as we tested it uh, was paired with a you know as I mentioned kind of earlier that we covered the pair of Rel S812s. Uh, also, uh, speaker cable-wise, uh, AudioQuest Rocket 44s, yep. um, the Arcam A49 powering the whole system, yep. uh, the Furman, uh, what is it, Elite IT, Reference? IT Reference oh, yeah. 20. Yeah, sorry, yeah, IT Reference uh, 20. That's my piece of <laughs> brain down. Um, that's great. Yeah, the <laughs> IT Reference 20i, which is actually a great power condition. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's, it, I know. I have noticed a really fantastic performance difference with it. But, um, yeah, for the most part, I mean, this room, uh, yeah, big big component as well. Yep. Um, Definitely. But, tell me about Sony in general. Sure. So, uh, Sony was founded in 1946 in Tokyo, Japan by two gentlemen. Uh, I'm probably going to uh, butcher their names here, but uh, um, Akio Morita and um, Masaru Ibuka. Um, and um, Sony is kind of a combination of two different terms. Uh, there's a Latin term, Sonus, which is for sound. Um, and then there is also uh, the, the term Sunny, which uh, in, in American um, kind of slang, in 1950s slang, was kind of like, you know, um, like a, a slang for a young boy. Uh, uh, and and um, the term in 1950s Japan, Sunny Boys, was considered um, a, a, like like young and, and smart and presentable men, which the founders of Sony felt that they were young and smart and presentable. Well, and, it, and um, it, you know, uh, essentially, though, the whole idea is that you combine the young, smart, presentable men with audio, with sound, and that's Sony right there. Really fantastic. I oh, that. that was a brain story for the finer things. <laughs> <laughs> so... Anyway, though, uh, Sony kind of started their uh, their existence making transistor radios. That's like one of the their first things, or their most popular items was a transistor radio. They had great success with that, and then they kind of branched out from there. And obviously, Sony today is huge. They make they they, they make speakers. They make cameras. You're they, looking at this on the Sony camera and lens. Yes, by the, uh, by the way, lens to the living room. <laughs> uh, gotta say, right? That's that's Sony's uh, yeah. little slogan there, yeah. uh, because they make the cameras that film most of the content you watch. They make the mastering equipment that most content is rendered on. And, of course, they make the televisions that you're watching it on for the and most part. And the projectors part. you watch it on. Yeah, theaters. or the projectors you're watching it on. So, definitely, that's uh, kind of their, their slogan there from the lens to the living room, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, but, anyway, though, uh, you know, you know, Sony, it's... it's they're a pretty big company. They they rank 97 in the Fortune 500 company. That's pretty darn good. Definitely better than the finer things. I don't think we're going to make that list. <laughs> maybe next year. Yeah, maybe yeah, we're next year. That's, chart. It. That's yeah. it. We, we definitely we want to be like number three next year. That'd be pretty cool. Uh, we're going to misplace <laughs> Siemens. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and Sony is the world's fifth 
largest manufacturer of television displays and they actually dominate the premium television segment uh, which is 55 inches and larger um, at a cost of about two thousand dollars and up um, so uh, they, they have a lot of clout uh, behind them for sure um, you know but one thing that they're not really known for these days um, is audio, which is kind of ironic, I find, because, you know, Ahmed and I, we've done a lot of listening um, these these past couple a lot of, of days. shows, even? Uh, they well, never have these? Well, no, of... no, they don't. The last time that I saw Sony speakers was at the New York Audio Show in 2012, um, and they had uh, the big brother to Ahmed's uh, SSNE2s, right, right, which were the SSAR1s. I wish. Oh my goodness, $27,000 a pair, they were powered by Pass Labs, 40th anniversary electronics, like they were just bomb, they were, they were absolutely amazing, they were really something. Um, but the point is, um, I, I guess, almost a disappointment in, in my mind is that, you know, Sony has the capability of making these wonderful speakers, these really amazing speakers, and, and they don't really... They don't really like, I don't know, capitalize it on, on it otherwise. At least so I thought. Yeah. Until. My, my thing is, <laughs> it's such a shame because, and, and we'll get to the performance and everything. Of course, of course. But my thing is, they clearly care so much and know so much. They do. They have a tremendous knowledge. About the sound, about sound in general, but the sound of their speakers. But obviously the business end of it and then this is my you know two cents anyway sure doesn't really care about trying to sell and promote and expose what their sound engineers are doing yeah so sony they have a really strange business model they do uh they have different silos uh, kind of different departments within the company uh that focus on different items you know with some on cameras some on tvs some on video game systems etc etc and and they kind of compete for funding it's a little weird um and that, that was actually explained to me by uh, a former employee of sony um, and, um, you know, it's, it, it's, to me, it's, it's kind of very strange because I, I feel like a lot of larger companies are not more streamlined. Really, yeah, yeah. They're a little more streamlined than that. They're not quite as like competitive against themselves. I it too has been explained to me by some industry Sony people that Sony is run in an extremely old school way. Yeah. Like I was asking a relatively high ranking, like a person who goes to Japan to go to Sony yeah, yeah, from yeah. America. Um, and, and that guy was telling me, uh, basically that it's run in a very old school way. They don't believe in a lot of online marketing, things like that. They don't want to give product to like YouTubers and stuff like that. So, you know, we have to go out and buy them. Yep. Although, you know, even though we're approaching 4500 level, Sony has actually not contacted us <laughs> to give us stuff. Uh, it's, it's very outrageous. offensive. Yeah. Actually, yeah. yeah really outrageous. Yeah, I mean, no. I, uh, what, what did you pay for these? A whole $87? Yeah, yeah, just about. They, oh they regularly geez. go on sale for, for 75 bucks. I caught them on a, a slightly less aggressive Six, sale. $6,000 rails, but... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they broke the bank. Yeah. Okay. But, but these, uh, the, the last $87, really, yeah. So, yeah, these are really interesting. It's a three-way design. There's a super tweeter, a tweeter, and a mid-bass unit, which is very unique to bookshelf speakers, i got to say. Um, you know, I have two it's, super tweeters on my towers. You do, Yes. Um, but for a bookshelf speaker for $150 to have like a super tweeter, that's, that's something. That's something right there. Um, Six super tweeters in this room. That is true. <laughs> uh, looks like uh, frequency response is down to 53 hertz, which I gotta say for a $150 bookshelf, that is impressive. It, it really is. Um, it, you know, that's something where, you know, if they can actually hit that in room, which honestly I'm inclined to believe after our they can, session, yeah. with a couple of those Michael Jackson tracks, the way that they, <laughs> oh yeah, 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 they, yeah, they, yeah. Were, they were really going there. Yes. Um, I, I, I feel like, yeah, it is 5.12 inches. What a weird size. Yeah. That, that is five really quarter, strange. But, uh, um, and the tweeter is 0.98 inches. Not one inch. Can't be <laughs> one inch. It's got to be 0.98 <laughs> inches. Uh, that, that is just absolutely crazy. Um, and you know what? They don't even list the super tweeter size. Well, if you want to pull up the uh, the, the, the measurements for the SSNA2ES. Yeah, because it, it looks to be about the same, yeah. to be very honest. The assist tweeter is... <laughs> <laughs> 0.75 inches for the assist. Yeah, that we, looks to be about the same. Yeah, um, and and I think uh, we have a couple of shots where we put yeah. the bookshelf speaker next to your tower speakers and uh, looks to be about the same. And honestly, this guy looks to be about the same as well. Yeah, so this guy, um, uh, really, really cool. Part of Sony's CAS-1 
uh, you know, kind of compact uh, desktop speaker system. Yeah. Comes uh, with this awesome little headphone amp and DAC unit. Uh, but but also these pair of speakers, which I really didn't think much of and really generally wasn't using until we were we were demoing these guys and the SSNA two ESs and like oh well, I've got those you know those, those little speakers in the just shelf just for giggles there. yeah throw them on turns out they sound really good they and do. they want power they love power so uh, you know just for some clarification uh, uh, the first part of our listening session with both of these speakers uh, we were powering them with an Arcam A forty nine which for those who don't know is a class G integrated amplifier it's 200 watts into 8 ohms and 400 watts into 4 ohms it's nothing to sneeze per at channel. Uh, yeah per channel by the way very very powerful um and uh, not exactly cheap certainly not something that you would pair with these speakers normally to be very honest but you know something that's a welcome pair to your ssn eight sure. troops for example um but man, these speakers were lively, and they loved the power. They yes. absolutely loved it. It was it was really incredible. And um, uh, you know these these guys here, the the CAS one speakers, uh, they especially uh, loved the power. Never did we experience a time where they were straining themselves or, or breaking yeah. up. Like, honestly, I was concerned they were just going to catch on fire with that <laughs> kind of power. I, I yeah, really no. was. I really was. I was and, convinced we were going to immediately blow the Oh, yeah, yeah. Just, like, yeah. blow them right up. Yep. And it didn't happen. No. And that's a testament to the quality of these speakers. Another thing I took... Tiny a... little things. These are... Look at, look at the size difference between these two. It's crazy. Something I took a mental note of. The maximum listening volume we really put the towers to was 40. The max, and that's on the A49. Yep. The maximum listening volume we put these to was about 40, typically 40. Yep. We put these guys up to 45, 46 regularly. Yep. The subs no were. Oh, yeah. The trying subs to were fight just me. Like, ah! Yes. <laughs> they were absolutely <laughs> waving insane. around. Oh, my goodness. They were, they were but just these crazy. Guys were just. Happy to play. Oh, yeah. a, you know, the, when we first started listening to these little CAS ones, and this freaking video is not about these, but I'm still going to talk about them. <laughs> we're sitting kind of low, and I was like, yeah, it sounds really good. It's cool that they're taking the power, they're not breaking up. Oh, yeah, but these let's were get them low. higher. Yep. Because I really think that's what's holding them back, is that they're so far below. Well, we put them on top of the Q350s. Yep. And lo and behold, that, that really opened, like, opened them up. up. Yeah, for yep. sure. It, uh, they were just sitting too low. Um, it was. It was, they're shockingly good. Should you pair these with stuff like this? Obviously not. No. But it, it, shockingly it, it competent. Was, it was really incredible, though, the experience and just fooling around with them. Uh, it was kind of fun. But getting back to these guys, these are something special, um, at, at least when we powered them with the Dark Camp. The pace, rhythm, and tempo tempo the Pratt was just unbelievable it was like you had your foot tapping the whole time it didn't matter what you were listening to it was engaging it was enthralling it was just incredible to listen to and it's like in your mind you're thinking like what is going on here these are these are retail $150 on sale for $75 speakers and they're making me do this they're getting me involved in the music in ways that a lot of more expensive speakers couldn't which by the way we tested the cap Q150s and Q350s, and they didn't involve us in the same way that these speakers did. The Q150s and the Q350s were more serious, articulate, oh, yeah. analytical speakers. Yep. They had more impact. They had more dynamic. They were more resolved, for I sure. I still wanted to listen to these. Yep. There was a harshness to the Q150s and Q350s that these didn't have. These had this, like, buttery sort of smoothness to them. Sweetness. Yes. The sweetness, but still at the same time, you, you just had this like jive with them where, where it was just like, oh man, the this cheapest is really enjoyable. pair of speakers I own. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. I didn't want to take them out of the system. Absolutely. Oh my goodness. It, it was just, it's so much fun. We actually went back and listened to these some more. Yes. You know, it, they were so enjoyable. We weren't like to the point where it was like, okay, we're done with these. Let's go back to the SSNA 2s. We you thought know. we were going to sit down. Demo the SSNA 2 ESs, demo these SSCS 9s, and then just go, yeah, they're pretty cool. Good value. You should buy them. And that's what this video is going to be about. And for the most part, I mean, that's what it is. the video yeah, is about. Generally speaking, yeah. But Having what we didn't that. expect <laughs> was to be so excited about them that we were going to sit and listen for five hours. Yeah. Because that's what we, we did. We literally listened for five we hours. We didn't listen to these crazy. exclusively. 
However, no, no, no. We did comparison tests because we, we were so these. excited yeah. about them. We listened to these and we listened to these and we listened to the Q150s, Q350s. We wanted to make sure that we, you know, covered all of our bases. And <sighs> damn, these are just so much fun to listen to. I think some of the buttery smoothness that we get is because they're using Silk Dome uh, Super Tweeter and Tweeters. Um, you know, I, I think that's a big part of it. Um, you know, these guys have a reinforced cabinet per Sony. Are, are they the most reinforced cabinet? No, but the fact that Sony pays attention to that sort of thing, I think, is really important. At the price point, yeah. Uh, certainly. Uh, their their uh, mid base driver is micro reinforced, so uh, it's supposed to be a little bit more pistonic in movement than your average $150 speaker. I tend to agree with that. I think the bass response from these was the most startling out of all of it. Yeah. Uh, where it was just like, we turned off the rail subs because we were listening to the S812, you know, with these with the SA12s for a while and and we we're like wow this is really great really awesome but you know is six thousand dollars worth of subwoofers impeding us from listening to the hundred and fifty dollar bookshelves when we turn those off are we gonna lose all life to this sort of stuff um, so you know we, we turned off the woofers and lo and behold these things could hold their own yeah. it was like holy cow this stuff is it, it, I, mean, this I are still amazing. had a smile on my face oh I'm yeah still tapping my foot absolutely incredible um, you know just really lots of fun um, and then you know we kind of thought to ourselves all right well listen people aren't going to be pairing a fifty seven hundred and fifty dollar Arcam A49 <laughs> integrated amplifier with hundred and fifty dollar bookshelf speakers. It's just you know it, it's it's kind of like what's an edge use case. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, some of my friends do that with LS50s where they have insane systems with Cap LS50s. Actually, my system's getting <laughs> up there right now with Cap LS50s, um, and and you know the same way where they kind of scale up to that level of system. So it's like okay, well, you know, maybe. Maybe these with uh, a different receiver. We we got to see how that sounds like. So Ahmed had uh, a Marantz NR twelve hundred, which I think retails for five hundred bucks, six hundred dollars. Yeah. It's a two six hundred dollars. It's an audio video receiver, you know, HDMI's yep. stuff like that. It's basically just you know, imagine a stock standard AVR. However, significantly more musical, a um, little bit, quite a lot less power. I think it's at RMS about sixty watts. Yeah. Um, you know, relative to most AVRs, so less. Um, but you know, just two channels designed for two channel music listening as well as you know audio video yeah. receiving, and and definitely closer anyway to the price point that someone would pair up with these hundred and fifty dollar retail speakers. Um, here's, and you know, we, we, we listen to though we we listen to that system, uh, and admittedly it was without the rels because honestly, you, I mean in in this budget category you just wouldn't have the rels sure. right. Um, so we listen to those and. Um, it was definitely a different experience. Here's where uh, we get to downsides overall. Yeah. Now, even moving back to pairing them with the A49 for a moment, um, there are songs, there are types of music where even though this sounds lively and fun, there's a certain level of detail, clarity, and especially high frequency articulation and sense of overall space. Yeah, the sense, sense of space. The sound yeah. stage kind of collapsed. For certain tracks, for more, you know, we listened to a little bit of opera, a little bit of classical, and uh, some more modern jazz, you know, Gregory Porter, things of that nature. Also, um, okay. some Art Blakey and the Jazz Messengers. Yeah. And it does those tracks well enough. It, it, it's pretty good. Um, but they do, you know, for more art, for more serious listening, they fall apart a little bit. Yeah. But I would say... For 85 to 90% of popular music, and again, in the unrealistic circumstance that you're pairing something like this with all this gear, high-end cables and yep. power conditioners and a dedicated space and all that, it's th th they knock your socks off. Yeah. Um, you however... Know, <laughs> Ahmed and I were kind of joking um, off camera, and, and we were saying, you know... Speakers are snake oil. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, especially honestly, after these. Oh, yeah. Especially <laughs> after the, Oh, my goodness. But even after these. Yeah. It was just like, we can get a $75 a pair speaker on sale to sound so incredible that we don't want to stop listening to it. Like, 
you know, coming from someone, especially like myself, who is just kind of snooty toward the audio thing, I'll be very honest, you know, I, I usually, you know, I'm a, I'm a very critical listener, I'm very particular about what sort of equipment I pair with what, so on and so forth, and these things just, they, they put a smile on my face, they really did. They, they, they made music so enjoyable at such an incredibly low price, it was just, it was comical. It was, it was actually comical, it was like... <laughs> You know, these, you know, the $700 calves couldn't do what the $150 retail, $75 on sale, Parasonis could do. Now, that, that was something. I, I mean, of course, yes, in the right system circumstances, yes. so of course. getting back to pairing it with the NR1200, yes. it's fine, it's good enough. Yeah. It, it, it was totally, totally different. I do think if we, for example, had it on hand... Something with a lot more juice, yeah. uh, like it, like an inexpensive, you know, chai fi type class D amp, something that's Definitely. really gonna pump some power into these things, or even something you know, older and used that just yep. puts out a lot of power, oh, something yeah. you can pick up for five, six hundred bucks. I, I, I suspect that they would open back up. You know what, you know, what would probably be a good one is the uh, BK components reference 50. Um, or not the reference 50, excuse me, the, AR, the AVR 507S2 receiver. I was thinking of the processor variant. Uh, that's 150 watts all channels driven. Um, it, it, things a beast for a receiver. It's like 60 pounds. Got a giant toroidal transformer in there. Um, you know, that that would be something that I would probably pair with these. And one of my, um, one of my friends actually picked one of those up for 250 bucks. Like like dirt cheap. Mm. Uh, I think I think they actually paid more in shipping than <laughs> they did, uh, to to get the item. Um, but you know that has enough current, enough drive to you know make these speakers really sing and uh, sounds pretty darn good. Now going back to the ten thousand dollars size. <laughs> yes, yeah, the um, SSN H. So this is where, and we had this little realization, right? So these guys have a musicality, a fun, a sweetness, a creaminess, a foot tapping, Pratt in experience, you know, amazing Pratt they experience. Do. The uh, calf, you know, Q one hundred and fifties and three hundred and fifties have articulation. Uh, they're more accurate in they're terms more of resolved. Uh, they're better in all these sort of analytical ways yeah. for the most part. More impact too, because you know the calf speakers are punchy yeah. like that. Hundred percent. Yeah. However, the towers. Are, are really what marry those two sort of profiles yep. where you to get your have cake. It. Yep. Yeah, yeah, you say the same exact thing. Have your cake and eat it too. 100%. Um, you, you get the musicality, you get the creamy, buttery smoothness, the yeah. awesome musicality, but it's impactful, it's accurate, it's, there's an amazing sense of space. Like, there was a point, I remember, where we were listening to uh, Oh Sole Mio, uh, the Evolo uh, version uh, you should check them out. They have a little awesome, uh, sort of younger, contemporary very enjoyable. Italian group. Um, and, you know, we're listening to the track on these, the uh, SSCS9s, and I'm thinking, oh my God, the sense of space. I, I'm, I'm, This is incredible. So then we quickly, you know, pop the cables out, uh, put them back into the uh, SSNA 2 es Sony Towers. We were concerned. Yeah, we were yeah, genuinely yeah, yeah. concerned. Did I waste $9,000? dollars 98 just um, about, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, These are two it, cents. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> hey, hey, listen, listen. Seventy-five dollars might as well yeah, be two yeah, cents, yeah. honestly. Fair. In the grand scheme uh, of things. Yeah, right. But we 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 pop the wires back into the towers, and the the, the sound is big like this. It goes. <laughs> it's like, huge. It's, yeah. Oh it's, yeah. And 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 there was even additional impact. Yes. That that was delivered there. That um, yeah, you know, we had the subs running both times, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And uh, still, there was more impact with the towers. There was a greater sense of space. Sure. The imaging was razor sharp. There were textures. There, you know, there were there were things that these speakers, as lovely as they are for one hundred and fifty dollars a pair, simply couldn't do. Um, and gosh, looking at the finish of your speakers <laughs> uh, of the SSN A twos, uh, in the in the wrong lighting, they just look like your black average, almost. yeah, piano yeah. black sort of uh, speakers. Maybe an extra fine piano black finish, but that's kind of what they. Look Sure. In the right lighting, however, they show 
that the, the, the fact that it's actually wood underneath that it's you know whatever Japanese maple or birch or whatever. European birch European birch yeah. thank you very much yeah I was thinking the Japanese maple was the uh, AR ones yeah um, so uh, on the SSNA too so they used a European birch which they stained this lovely oh this this super dark dreamy like, oh man yeah. like burgundy but like whoa way 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 dark I'm gonna sound like a nutcase but. If you watch this channel, you think that anyway. Um, but there are times where once in a while, in the right light, when I have these speakers out in my, you know, sort of normal living room space, I would just stare at them. And oh, yeah. I would look at them and just go, oh my goodness, they're so beautiful. The and, finish is so fun. And my girlfriend would be like, what, what are you doing? And I would, just look at the speakers. They're, they're so pretty. She'd be like, yeah, they're nice. They're black. I'd be, they're not black! They're <laughs> European birch! <laughs> and I grab a light and I shine it on them. Like, Look, it's like, yeah, they're brown. I'm like, you don't know. No, they are me. not brown. Look at the wood grain. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. But, so um, um, I, I guess that takes care of the subjective evaluation <laughs> of our video there. Um, so that kind of brings us to the value proposition. Are they worth it? Um, and the thing is, like, after hearing them on such high-end equipment, um, my humble opinion is that, okay, well, that's great. These speakers can grow with you. You can buy these speakers as the cheap option to pair with your $279 Denon receiver. Sure. But at the same time, as you upgrade your electronics, in the meantime, these speakers are going to grow with you. They'll grow with you all the way up to your RCAM A49, <laughs> where they just freaking astound Perhaps you. Perhaps beyond. Oh, yeah, maybe even beyond. I don't know. We haven't even tested it. I kind of want to take these up to... Uh, up to my place and uh, hook them up to the pathos. Hundred yeah, percent. Yeah, I, I, uh, I think that should be that should be uh, maybe a future video that we. I want to bring them to an audio show and hook them up to a <laughs> pair of D'Agostinos. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, D'Agostino relentless. Like, yeah. Can, can you please move these Harbeth forty dot twos? Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I've got yeah. something a little more interesting. Uh, yeah, the Wilsons. Just get them out yeah, of the way. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're not. No, they're not worthy. <laughs> these guys right here. Listen, listen, this is God's gift to audio right yeah, here, okay? Yeah. I'm, I'm going to pop over to the ESD acoustics room and, hey, can I borrow a wheelbarrow to take your power conditioner? The big honk <laughs> Oh, yeah, the, the floor standing oh, thing. That's like, crazy. Oh, yeah, cool, absolutely. What are you going to pair it with? Let me tell listen. you. I'm trying to get the most out of a speaker. <laughs> Oh, that's just incredible. Uh, oh. one, one of their tweeters weighs like triple with these. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> ESD Acoustics, awesome oh my God, uh, yeah. Chinese company. You know, not just, not the most well known, but really they, look into them. Their middle level horn speakers weigh twenty five hundred pounds it's each. Just, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely incredible. It, it's oh my goodness. Yeah, a cool cool company. Yeah. Uh, if if you've got like half a million to spend, yeah, their their <laughs> horn system absolutely. is really to die for. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah, is, totally yeah. Is. Yeah. very cool totally system. Is. The way it sounds, just yeah. unreal. Um, but you know, having said that, even even for um, when they were being driven by the NR twelve hundred, they didn't sound bad. No, um, you know, they, they were actually you know they they were good enough. The magic um, was just gone. Yeah, yeah, and and that's that's a, it's a real testament to their ability to their to their ability to resolve hundred percent sound. Um, and like I said, they they can grow with you if you're an aspiring audiophile. Where you really want to get into this stuff, you know, these kind of provide you with your first taste of decent sound. Uh, I would still contend that they, with the NR twelve hundred, sounded better than most sound bars. I oh, oh easily, you easily, know, um, especially from a from a standpoint of overall clarity. Um, and you know, I I, I feel like for six hundred and seventy five dollars you know, for the total system. Yeah, absolutely. Unpopular opinion. I think that seven of these all around. With a competent subwoofer system, maybe not the Rels, but something decent. Sure. HC twelve hundred five. Yeah. HC twelve hundred fives or heck, Sony makes some matching woofers for these. Yeah, it's not I'm the best, curious but to hear that. Yeah. Uh, it, you know, I've I've heard variations of that woofer over the years. It's you know, it's a, it provides a solid foundation. You know, it's it's not fast. Sure, like sure. The Rels, you know, it doesn't give that black. Mm -hmm. um, but mm -hmm. um, you know, it it's still you know it's all right. Um, I think that would be a really cool multi-channel concept uh, to listen to either super audio CDs or just to you know watch a movie on Netflix or whatever. I think it'd be really cool. Um, and um, you know, it, Ahmed bought these particular speakers. Um, I, I'm really considering getting my own. <laughs> I, 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 after hearing them on his system, um, I, I have a similar amplifier uh, on hand, the Arcan PA240. 
Um, I'm really considering getting a pair of these just for fun. Yeah. Because uh, they were so much fun to listen to. 100%. They, they really were. So, I, I'm really, like, chomping at the bit, just for the fun of it, to hear them with, you know, higher-end stuff. Yeah. Class A monos. Oh, Pass goodness. labs. Yeah, we, we really have to huh? experiment with that. But, you know, going back just for a moment before we sort of wrap up, uh, the value proposition. Are these worth it? Like, yeah, obviously, you can tell that. Yeah. Are, huge, huge value. Are the big, 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 big brothers, price-wise speaking, relatively worth it? In my opinion, still, yes. Uh, if you want your cake and you want to eat it too, like we said before, if you want the musicality, the fun, the punch, the, the sense of space, um, yeah, you, you, you do tend to have to pay for it. Yeah. Pairing them with a, with an amazing pair of subs like the Rells, yep. good way to do it too. Fire. Yeah, 100%. Yep. But um, 150 bucks for a pair of speakers, 10000 for a pair of speakers, you can have an amazing experience either Both way. Ways. Yeah, for sure. Um, and, and that's the beauty of, uh, of Ahmed's room here that we have set up. You know, we've got these... Uh, these little guys right here, which were in their own way so fun to um, listen to. Amazing. It's, it's, it's in a just sense, like absolutely yeah. incredible that they didn't just like blow up. Yeah. Um, and, and, and then you've got these guys here, which are just like so much fun. They are so much fun to listen to. We didn't even want to stop listening to them. It was really incredible. And then, of course, Ahmed's uh, large uh, SSN A2s, which are probably out of frame, um, <laughs> that um, are, are just like wow. It, you, you get all of the foot tapping fun and excitement, but at the same time, you get the serious amounts of resolution. You get the serious amounts of musicality. Um, it, it's really something. It really is. Totally agree. Definitely. Hey, listen, if you're enjoying the content, uh, subscribe, give us a like, drop a comment. Let us know of a speaker you think is just as fun or more fun or give us your cool, you know, cheap speaker experience. We definitely want to hear about it. Show us your system setups. That's cool, too. We always like looking at those. It's 100%. Fun. Um, and uh, really subscribe. Tap the bell. <laughs> yeah. Tap the bell. Uh, you know, that's the real subscribe button to get all of the notifications of the Finer Things YouTube channel um, into your YouTube inbox. Um, you know, that's, that's, really, uh, that's really where the fun happens. Check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Twitter. 100%. <laughs> but uh, I think that's about it, guys. Thanks for watching. Thank you.